Okay, so we're going to go fly to P-51C today for airplane of the day. No, I'll get to, yeah, I'll, I'll, because I haven't warmed it up yet. Okay, looking up in here, we're looking for hydraulic leaks. We're looking for anything that looks broken. That's great. Radiator looks okay. Scoop uh, thing is out. We usually keep birds and stuff out of there. Stacks all look good. Same thing on this side, although we're looking for the governor pressure. We're looking for 400 pounds. Everything looks good here. Looking for brake leaks. All looks good. <clears throat> Make sure everything is uh, not dinged, broken, or scratched. It's got plenty of fuel. Radiators up. Great oil. Okay. I trust my guys. Controls all look good. The uh, elevators on the early Mustangs were fabric. The rudders on all of them are fabric. That's pretty cool. Of course, this is a red tail paint job Tuskegee Airman with Lee Archer. Looking good. <clears throat> okay. That's where I can get it. <clears throat> parachute is actually the seat cushion itself so it's always nice to have that available although the only reason I would jump out of this thing is if there was a pretty sizable fire <clears throat> or the wing came off or there was a hundred Messersmith after me <laughs> I'd do the best I could. Okay. Seat belt tight first. Then we do the shoulder harnesses. And uh, the thing's locked, but there's actually a little thing over here that I can unlock and lean forward, and I'll lock that before takeoff. Okay, get the helmet on. Route all the radio cables so I'm not in the way. Okay, first thing we do is the flaps come up. We've got the ram air on. Gonna go ahead and leave the radiator and the uh, oil cooler automatic switches in uh, the off position. Uh, rudder trim is set to five degrees right rudder. Set the elevator trim to just a little bit nose up. Aileron's level. I'll cut off props full forward. That's the bomb release and that's basically, uh, we don't use that. Okay, fuel is on. Looking at how much we've got. Appears to be fuel. That's the right gauge in the wing. That's the left gauge in the wing. And uh, we're going to start off with the left because the carburetor overflow actually goes back to the left tank. So if we had the left tank full and we took off on the right tank and the carburetor filled, we'd start overflowing fluid out of the uh, left tank. Um, Push in the hydraulic uh, accumulator release so the hydraulic pressure will work. Go ahead and turn on the battery, the generator. Now the reason I turned these off is because if I would have 
if I would have uh, turned them into the automatic position, you can listen to the uh, radiator shut. So I don't mess with that until I've actually got it started. So we got there, I got to prime it. In the early Mustangs, you actually had to manually prime uh, the engine. And so I got fuel pressure over here with the fuel pressure pump on. A couple of squirts. That's locked that. That's still up. Throttle crack. And uh, I have not flown this in a while, so I'm going to have to pre-oil the engine. You didn't pre-oil the engine, did you? I'm going to pre-oil it for two minutes. Now what that does is it's going to uh, pressurize the system, so I've got oil pressure, and it's going to pump oil up through the crankshaft, up into the top end, and it's going to take about two minutes to get oil up on the camshaft. Because remember, it's a V12 engine, and uh, the cam actually hits the rocker arms metal to metal, so it's very important that they're lubricated before we start. Zero the altimeter. that after we get started and the vacuum gauges all get working. That's about a minute. And the uh, pre-oil pump's putting out 100 PSI and it's uh, just pumping oil into the engine, getting to all the parts before we actually start moving them. And we do this, if I haven't flown the airplane in about two weeks, I'll, uh, I'll pre-oil the engine. If we're flying it on a regular basis like they did in the war, they didn't worry about it, but uh, it helps the life of the engine. Okay, that was about two minutes. 